Hello friends, welcome to Core Basics Coding Tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about multiprocessing pool. Here I have a program which is calculating the square of all the numbers in this array. So I have this array, I'm going through the array here and then I'm calling this function which is just a very simple function calculating the square of the number and I append the results and I'm printing the results. So if I run this program, the program works fine, absolutely no issues. Now let's look into internal details on how Python will execute this program using the CPU on your computer. So let me show you our diagram here. Here this big uh, yellow block is your CPU and it is having four cores. These cores are nothing but uh, processing units present on your CPU or central processing unit. Nowadays, most of the computers comes with multiple cores. So it is very likely you will have multiple cores. You might have two cores or four cores based on the kind of configuration you have. But let's assume you have four cores here. When you execute that program, the, your OS is going to select one of the cores and this core will execute the entire program. Now the problem here is that you have three other cores sitting idle. Now when you're running multiple programs on your computer, most likely they will be doing some work, but let's say if they are not doing some work, then they are sitting idle. Okay. Now this program is pretty simple you have fine numbers and you are calculating square so it is not very computationally intensive but if you are doing heavy image processing or heavy computation then giving all workload to one core might not be a good idea i mean if you can somehow parallelize your work and divide this input into these multiple cores it would be better okay so I'm going to show you how you could do it. So let's say you have input, you have four cores. And somehow if you can deploy your code on, if you can deploy your code on all the cores, and then let's say if you can divide your input between all these cores. So here I have one, two, three, four, five. So I just divided the all the numbers between the cores. So I have more numbers than the number of cores. So this guy is getting two numbers, okay? But essentially you are dividing the work equally between all these four units. And let's say they calculate the results. And here are my results. And in the end, you aggregate those results back into one output, okay? Now, difference between this approach and the previous approach is that here you are utilizing all the cores. Of course, you have to do some division of work and then aggregation but you are utilizing all the processing power that you have on your computer okay this is called parallel processing and this process of dividing the numbers the input between multiple cores is called map versus the process of aggregating these results back is called reduce so if someone talks about map and reduce this is what it is it's not a rocket science pretty simple concept map means you divide work between multiple units reduce means you aggregate those results back into one common or single output okay so let's do this exactly this thing using multiprocessing pool okay so i'm going to exit out of that presentation and i'm going to import pool so from multiprocessing import pool and here I'm going to create an object of pool class and I will say then the method that you want to use is p.map when you do map it will divide the work between multiple cores okay so the first argument is a function that you want to execute, which in our case is f. And the second argument is your array input. Okay. Now, this alone 
is going to divide the work equally between all available cores on your CPU. Okay, and it's also going to give you back the result. So see now my program is pretty simple. P dot map array and this function results the aggregate result back. When I run the program, I get the same output. Okay. Although visually I don't see any difference internally, it has divided the work equally between the course. Okay. Now let me show you how it can speed up the process. So if I'm going to measure the performance here, it's not going to be very different because the task that I'm doing is quite simple. So let me do some, some heavy lifting. I'm just going to make something up. So for X in range 100 sum plus equal to X cross X and sum. So I'm just, I'm just making something up. Okay. Um, and this goes back and I'm not going to print result because it's going to be too much. So here, okay. So here, let me do this instead of the array. Let me supply huge array with like, let's say 10,000 elements. Okay. And just to make it even more computationally intensive, I'm going to increase the range over there. And I'm going to measure the performance of this program. So um, let me import time so that I can measure the performance. So T1 is equal to time. So when you do this, it's gonna take the current time. And at this point, by the way, when you do pull, you have to do pull dot close and P dot join. That way, this will return only if all the workers which you created using this function are done executing their code. Okay, now let me print the, so here what I'm saying is pull took, how much time did it take? Uh, well, pull took time dot time. So here I'm again taking the current timestamp and then subtracting T1. So this way I get the time difference between this line and this line. So you're measuring the performance of your pull core. Okay. And in the second section of my code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in a single loop. So for X in range, same number. So I just copy paste and then, uh, I'm going to, I need to aggregate the result. Okay. So result is this and result dot append F dot X. Okay. Pretty straightforward. And then I will say print a serial processing took so this is serial processing time dot time. Now I need to take another timestamp here T2. Okay, fairly straightforward. This time is the time between this line here and here. So I'm, I'm measuring performance of this code versus this code and I'm comparing them. Let's run it. So you can see here that pull is taking less time. It took 0.51 second, which is like half second. And this took almost double, which is almost one second. Okay. You can see it. And as your processing load increases, let's say I add one zero here, as your processing load increases, pull is going to perform better and better. So pull took 2.83. And this guy has not returned yet. Uh, we'll see how much time it takes. It's, it's going to take considerably long time. So you see 9.5 seconds versus 2 seconds. So using pull will speed up your processing time. Because as I said, you're dividing tasks 
your work between uh, multiple units okay uh, next thing uh, we want to talk about is pull has an argument called processes so processes if you just say processes equal to let's say three okay uh, if you do that it's gonna create only three processes at the same time so again for the output you don't see any result but internally at a time it will create only three processes okay so that was all about pool in python i hope you are having fun time learning multi-processing and multi-threading in python please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also uh, remember to listen to my python multi-processing uh, playlist okay thank you very much